Thank you so much for joining me online. I'm Kevin Hurd and welcome to this edition of Kevin Talks Tech, my technology blog and podcast where I attempt to make things a lot more simple and easy to understand. So I'm not sure if you noticed this or not, if you've looked at new phones lately, but Verizon has changed the way that they handle cell phone plans. The way things used to work is you'd walk into a Verizon store if you're signing up for a new contract. You'd go in, you'd pick out a phone, you'd go up to the desk, you'd buy it, then you'd sign yourself into a two-year contract. And then what the benefit of doing that was is you get the phone at a subsidized price. So rather than paying an outrageous amount for a new iPhone, you'd end up paying maybe $200 or $300. Trade-off, of course, with that being is that you're locked into a two-year contract. Of course, during that two years, Verizon is going to make up the amount of money that you've gotten a subsidy for for that new phone, and so then you end up paying a little bit more in the end. Now, Verizon, much like T-Mobile and and some of the other carriers out there, some of the ones that uh, don't even offer contracts outright, they've now axed contracts, so there are no more contracts anymore at Verizon, and that's left some people a little bit confused about how things work when you do go into Verizon and you want to sign up for a new plan. Now, I'm going to talk today about this new model that they use. It's very similar to T-Mobile. AT&T does have a very similar plan as well. And so let me just explain to you how this works. Let's first talk about how this came to be. These days, people are really most concerned about data. You know, before everything was always based on minutes. Now we're really talking about data because that's what people use and that's how Verizon determines the price that you're going to pay for one of their new plans. I want you to think about data in terms of an umbrella for this example. Verizon basically offers four different umbrellas of data that you can choose from, at least four very common ones that most people would probably use. So you've got your one gigabyte of data, one gigabyte umbrella basically, your three gigabyte umbrella, your six gigabyte umbrella, and your 12 gigabyte umbrella. And so what Verizon does is they charge a certain amount each month to use this umbrella of data. For the one gigabyte it's 30 bucks, for the three gigabyte it's $45, so on and so forth. And so then what you do is you buy the device and you put it under that umbrella of data. Now in order to connect to that data, in order to use that phone with that data, you have to pay what's called a line access fee. That's basically the fee that you pay every month to be able to access that data with your phone. Now a smartphone to use on Verizon under one of those data umbrellas is $20 per month. And so basically, let's say you got a one gigabyte plan and you're connecting one phone to that amount of data, that one gigabyte of data. Your final cost would be $30 to access that umbrella of data, $20 for the line access fee, bringing you total, bringing you to a total of $50 per month, plus of course taxes and fees. So that's how that works. You can see how this works pretty good for families because for each family member, you just basically add on $20 per smartphone and then you have to buy that data plan that all the family members can access. Now, depending upon how many people you have in your family, this may be a good option. It may not be such a good option because again, the more phones that you add under that umbrella of data, the more data you're probably gonna need. Uh, Typically for a a one person, um, for one person who uses maybe Snapchat quite a bit, Facebook, uploads some videos to YouTube from their phone, maybe does some occasional video watching, streaming music, three gigabytes is really not a bad option. And so uh, a three gigabyte plan for one phone on Verizon, if we go back to that model again, 45 bucks a month for that umbrella of data, 20 bucks for the line access fee, now we're looking at 65 bucks for one person. Not too bad, I think a little bit better than uh, where we were at before. Um, If you wanna add an iPad or any other kind of tablet under that umbrella of data, $10 per month to add a tablet or hotspot, under that same umbrella. So you've got a phone, you've got a tablet, they're sharing that umbrella of data every month. So you'd be looking at 20 bucks for the line access fee for the phone, the umbrella costs for data, plus 10 extra bucks per month to have that tablet on there. So that's how things work. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning here is, as I I said this before, Verizon does not do contracts anymore. So you're not signing yourself up for two years of service and you're not locked in or anything like that. The one thing here that is good and bad about that, one is you're not locked in, but two, because you're not in a contract, Verizon has to be able to make up their, you know, loss in a certain amount of time, perhaps. Um, I don't want to say loss, but you know, they want to be able to make some money, basically. Um, And if you're not locking yourself down for two years for sure, 
as soon as that phone is paid off, you know, you're pretty much good to go and, and you know, you could go a different direction. So uh, what you have to do these days is you have to buy the phone outright. You have to pay the full price. And so for instance, this is the Galaxy Note 5. I bought this just a couple weeks ago when it came out. This phone is $700, uh, brand new. And so that's the price that I had to pay for this phone. Now before you freak out and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so much money, because it is a ton of money, they do have what's called installment plan. And uh, the other carriers uh, offer a similar kind of system too, where basically you pay the full price of the phone and spread it out um, across 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, 30 months. And so you just basically pay a certain amount every month until the phone is paid off. For instance, this one is on a, a two-year installment plan. And so every month I pay just X amount until I reach 700. Now I'm hoping uh, to get closer to 700 in under two years because then I'll be able to go and get a different phone perhaps. Or maybe I could take my phone off of Verizon and bring it to you know something like straight talk or total wireless which is offered at Walmart much lower monthly fee so I guess the best way to think about this is you're not really under contract technically with this new Verizon plan but you are kind of on the hook because you do owe Verizon for the full cost of the phone until you pay the phone off you're pretty much on the hook with Verizon so as I said before if you're planning to stay on Verizon you're not gonna jump over to a different you know lower cost carrier to operate your phone on, then you're probably fine spreading the payment out over two, two and a half years. But if it's something that you eventually do want to get off of or you want to upgrade to a new phone on Verizon, it might behoove you to pay the phone off a little bit faster. There are pros and cons to this. It's a lot to understand, a lot to take in. And so if you have any questions, feel free to go to my YouTube page, youtube.com backslash Kevin Talks Tech. I'd be happy to answer your questions under this video. And of course, if you'd like to see the write-up on this, kind of see everything in text, all written up, all you have to do is go to kevintalkstech.com and I've got the information for you right there. Thank you so much again for joining me. Have a fantastic rest of the day. We'll dive into some other cell phone questions, other cell phone plans on other carriers here in the near future for you as well.